give him that. So he was a tough kid. Yeah, he was definitely kid. I won't listen as much as I think people over to do it. You know, that's all. What about. other what other shows? Like since you've been off, uh, a lot of people have come on. Not a lot, but a few people have come on and a taken lot. over these. So, right. so what, what's your opinion of some of these shows? I mean, give us an example. Right. So the ratings is this, my opinion, the top shows. Uh, Sammy Gavano's number one. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, the Johnny and Gene show's number two. That's my opinion. As far as ratings, it was. Uh, Mike Francis is in a different league because he's more religious. He does more of like right. a religious thing. He's not really in the – he does mob now, but he was more of a religious speaker. So he's not really – he's in the genre, but he's not. But, like, it's more – I'll name the ones. We were number two. Jimmy Kalanja is number three. Right. Um, my opinion, Hootie would be next, but people don't give him the props that he deserves, you know what I mean, for the mob guys, because he really does have great stories, but they just keep crapping on him because of his ex-wife and what they're doing yeah, but, to him. But don't you think a lot of this is Hootie's fault? No, I don't, because, well, here's the thing with Hootie, okay? He has so many good stories, and he don't want to talk about them yet. And I told him, come out with your stories. Let them know who you really was. Stop, stop making yourself be like you were nothing because you were you were something. I grew up with him. He was the guy when I was a kid. He really was somebody. He really was with that crew. Start telling the stories. He didn't want to start. Now he's going to start. I got him. I got him ready to talk about the real stuff that he was a part of. So it'll get better for him. You know. So I I seen videos where Hootie has showed up. Hootie will say that he doesn't do drugs and stuff, but you'll see him in videos. It's obvious that something's wrong with him. Now do you and know that he works? Did, wait, do you know that he works two jobs? I understand that, but I know the difference between someone being high and not, you know. Well, right. I understand what you're saying, Lee. Yeah. You have your opinions, but he does work two jobs. His wife takes tons of money from his check. He, he, he you know, he's working 24-7. He goes from one job to the other. And, you know, maybe they're catching him when he looks like crap and people are saying he's a drug addict. But as far as I knew him, he was never a drug addict. I knew him my whole life. The guy sold drugs. He never did drugs. And, and that's a big, where do you think this drug addict thing came from? It's his ex-wife. People. Doing it. It's his ex-wife. She hates him. She told him it's either death or jail. That's she told him. I heard it with and my you? Th what do you think yeah. of the stack show? The stack show. I don't even put him in anything of us. You know, there's certain people that don't belong, and I'm going to explain that. You see how you and Ball Sicilian, I give you your credit because you're a good interviewer. You don't claim to be gangsters. You're claiming right. to be guys that do good shows and good interviews. I respect that. He's claiming to be something that he's totally not. He has nothing to do with anything. I don't know what he was except a crackhead streetwalker who tried to become a rapper. I don't have, I, I, he has no business in, in talking about anything about us. I don't care when you say something, Fat Balls of Saiyan says something, JC, even his show is good. He don't get the props he deserves. He's a, he actually has a good a good show. But him and Hootie are coming back together. A lot of people don't know that. So that's going to be good. Um, so I respect when you talk, when Fat Balls of Saiyan talks, I don't mind it. When you got this 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 bum crackhead nobody from I don't know where he's from Virginia somewhere in the sticks I don't know you know talking about us and rats and all this stuff who is this guy who are you like who did he put you on nobody even knew who you were you were homeless now you want to come talk about us and this and that I don't respect that you know did you, you guys did did you guys yeah. ever dox did you guys ever dox anybody. I don't even know what that is. I was trying to find out when you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys, you and you and because people would make it think act like you and John are out here plotting to destroy people. I mean, right? So your... you know, of course they're going to say that, and it might look like it's us because you know a lot of people do. I know it's crazy, but a lot of people do look up to me and Johnny. A lot of people do, and that's the God's honest truth. They know that we bring the views. They know anything. I could talk about taking a shit on YouTube and get 50,000 views. That's just what it is. I'm popular. So is Johnny. You know, at the end of the day, as many people don't like us, we're popular. So that's just what it is. You know what I mean? I have 45,000 followers on Instagram. That's a big following. You know what I mean? So, you know, we have a big following and people are going to try to destroy us. And they're going to try to knock us down. And they're going to basically say, you know, they're doing this, they're doing that to try to make us look like the bad guys and make them look like the good guys. That's just how it goes. That's the name of the game. You know how it is, Lee. That's well, just the way it goes. Well, you got to remember, too, that, you know, you you damaged you had something really good going and you fucked it up when you got mad. Right. I did. I you know, I, 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 I I'm I my own worst enemy and everyone knows that. And I openly admit that I have a problem. You know, I have a severe anger issue problem and uh, I try to control it, but it's not easy. So I lash out sometimes and, you know, I screw up. Are, are you getting any help for it? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I go to anger management once a week. Um you know, they make, they make, I want to go, you know, and, um, I talk with somebody once a week and I, you know, 
try to get out of this this uh, this brain of mine. It's just you know it gets crazy sometimes. You know, you know? what you remind me of? You remind me of Christopher in The Sopranos. <laughs> you be doing some crazy shit that don't make no sense. You know, remember you remember when he goes into the restaurant and the guy's into the deli and the guy's taking his time and he shoots him in the foot. <laughs> yeah, you know that that you know it's you know it's uh. You know what gets me mad, though, Lee? Like, like, I understand, like, I did a lot of messed up crimes. I did. I had bad crimes. You know, I had home invasions. I had serious stuff. But I was a real street guy. And, you know, I don't like to glorify it, but I'm just being honest with you. I was really out there, man. I was really doing my thing. And, you know, when they try to knock knock me and say, oh, he's this, he's a... I never did drugs. That was not known as a drug addict, and they can never say that. You know? Uh, I was really... But they do. Drug. They do. They put the word junkie on you. Yeah. It's, how, how does it, that make you feel? Well, I still talk to people from my neighborhood, and they're like, Gene don't do drugs. Like, they're, you know, everybody knows that's just like people talking. I wasn't a drug guy. That wasn't my thing. I wasn't into drugs. I was into money and women. That was my thing. And um, uh, so when they say that, I just laugh about it. But it just gets like, they talk about changing history. Like, you're changing my history. I wasn't a drug addict. I was a dangerous kid. I ran around, did a lot of messed up stuff, you know, and um, I worked for the mafia full time. I wasn't a part time gangster. I was full time, 24 7, own social club. So tell, so tell us who you work for in the mafia. I work for. A very, very powerful man, Vinny Asaro. He was a uh, Bonanno Capo. One time could have been the boss of the family. Uh, one time a consigliere. Uh, he was been around since the 50s. Um, I work for his nephew, Ronnie Gilonzo, one of the most wealthiest, powerful uh, uh, captains in the Bonanno crime family. Um, very violent, tough guy. His crew was um, me, him, Mike Palmacio, Mike Padavona, Pudgy, uh, and Bobby Gilonzo, and Ricky Kessler. That was the main guys growing up. I mean, coming up in our crew, that was our main circle. And then you had Jerry Asaro, Jackie, and um, a few other guys. But our main circle was the first ones I named. And why did why did you flip and how do you feel about it? Okay, so uh, my whole thing was this. Uh, me and my captain had a fallout, Ronnie G, a big fallout. And um, I had robbed him and went to Florida. I actually declared war on him before I went in. And um, when I was in, I just told him, yo, take care of my lawyer. You know, it is what it is. I'm facing natural life. They want you. They want you. It's all about you. You know, they want me, but they want you. That's the thing. I said, just take care of my lawyer. You know, you you supposed to straighten me out. You never did. You fucked me over on that. Um, uh, Vin wanted me in. He made sure he got me. He, didn't, he got me knocked down in a friendly way. He basically got me knocked down saying, oh, I need you in the street for me. So if you get straightened out, you go on my list. And now we can't hang out, which I don't know if he did it intentionally or unintentionally. I don't know, but he did it. So I always had a chip on my shoulder over that. And then... Um, when I got locked up, they kept they rearrested me three times. I had three different conspiracies: uh, a state conspiracy, a Florida conspiracy, and a federal conspiracy. Um, I was facing uh, I had 40, a forty. I could have copped out the forty years um, if I blew trial getting a uh, natural life. I um, ultimately sat up for nineteen months, and I realized that they weren't going to help me. I realized that he had fucked up my whole life. I worked, did everything for this man. He turned on me over a girl, basically. Okay, he basically made me choose between a girl and him. That's what he did. He basically said it's either the mob or your girlfriend. That's what he did to me. And he put me in a bad spot. And when I sat up 19 months, I, I said, fuck him. I said, you know what? He don't want to pay for my lawyer. He wants to leave me here. All right, I'm going home. And that's what I did. Are you still with this girl? No, it wasn't even about the Damn. girl. No, it, was, it, it wasn't even about the girl. It was more about he put me in that position. And then you don't get me straightened out. And then he tried to cut me off from making money. So how would you do that to your main guy? I did everything for you. I did dirty work for you, shot people for you, did everything for you. And this is what you do to me, you know, over something this this little. And, you know, I had a bitter in my heart to him. I hated, I actually hated the man. And, um, you know, at one time he was my closest friend and he turned on me. So I sat in there 19 months and I said, fuck it. I threw him in the towel and I cooperated, you know, and I never deny that. You know, I cooperated. I sold out. In the street world, I'm a sellout. You know what I mean? In the street Thing I, I was supposed to take my time and be the guy and take my forty years and go sit in jail till I'm dead and they won't send you a dollar. <laughs> and, so what? What? And what do you think? Uh, uh, when you and here's one of the things I hear. And right. just be straight up. A lot of people say that you would you went around and terrorized your neighborhood and right. you would go in regular houses and right. robbing people and tying right. them up. And uh, so basically, you were um, you were. Um, Shit in where you sleep. Right. So let me break that down for you. And I'll never deny it. I have done home invasions. There's no denying that. We targeted crime figures. And I always break this down to people. You know, we were robbing them. We were robbing other gangsters. We were robbing drug dealers. We were, um, uh, we have 
had civilians caught up in a criminal's house. That's where they turned that into. If you read Jerry Capisi's article, he states he targeted crime figures. That's what I was known for, targeting crime figures. Then he puts that I tied up civilians because there were civilians in the crime figure's house. You understand? So when we go in to rob the drug dealer, his girlfriend might be in there, and we tell her to go in the bathroom, and then we do what we do, and we leave. You understand? So they put it as I was tying up civilians. You understand? Right. And, and, and so can you honestly say that you never robbed a house that was just civilians? Yeah, I didn't do that. Remember, I was making tons of money on loan sharking and bookmaking. I did scores on, I had two separate teams. I had my mafia team and my robbery crew. I had two separate crews. I ran, I was the, I was called the crew leader in my robbery team. And I answered to Ronnie and Vinny in the mafia. So I did my thing with my robberies and I answered to the mob. Now they gave me robberies also. You know, I did robberies with my mob guys, but on top of that, I had my team where, I, where we got our scores and we did our thing. So it wasn't never targeting and it, we, we wouldn't want 50,000. We wanted 500,000. We wanted, you know, we would go for heists and we would get scores brought to us. And usually it's crime figures, drug dealers, loan sharks, bookies, stuff like that. And that's what we would hit, you know? When you, when you, uh, and when you were with the FBI and you had to give a lot of stuff up. Right. So does that pretty much mean that you just about gave up everything? Because they're very strict about that. They don't want to get right. you in no lies. Right. And here's so, the thing you, you have to tell them everything. Right. You can't right. leave nothing out. You know what I mean? So it could come back and haunt you. You know what I mean? So everything I ever admitted, it's on paper and it's in my book pretty much. So that's my profits. You can't lie. You know what I mean? You got to tell it what it was, you know, and all my stuff was checked out because there was 19 cooperators on my case. I was the last one to go bad. So you didn't know that. Now you know something new. <laughs> did, you go to, did you testify? Actually go to court? To test? So you nope. never testified. I never, t I never sat on the stand like Jimmy Calandra. No. I never sat on this thing. So what do you think about, okay, Jimmy Calandra would say that he basically testified because his bo his friend was shot and he wanted to get right. revenge. Do you believe that? Um, I actually do believe that, but it's an excuse also. You know what I mean? It's an excuse. You know, we all can make excuses why we did it. And you could say mine's an excuse. You know, I didn't want to, you could sit here and say I didn't want to do the time, you know, but I did 11 years of prison total. But I'm saying, um, it's an excuse in a way, but I do believe that because obviously you see how obsessed he is with Paulie. So, you know, I do believe that um, he might have did it because of that. But in my my whole opinion with Jimmy is that he's making himself bigger than what he is. Lee. A lot bigger than what he was. Let me just be honest with you. You know what I mean? He's, well, he's not. The, the thing yeah. I hear is that nobody would even know much about the Bath Avenue boys if Jimmy wasn't out there talking about him. No, that's not true. They were known. I'll give him that. That they were known. Okay. They were definitely did known. you know? Did did you have, have you heard about them in that world? Yes. Yes, that's true. And what did yeah. what did you hear? Um, they were honestly, and I'm not. They were low lives. Yeah, they were low life thugs, <laughs> animals running around, terrorizing the neighborhoods. You know, but they were they were with the mafia, but they were just like thugs, like you know, mm -hmm. just straight doing fucked up shit. And that's what they were doing. And they were tough, but they were killers. They were tough guys. They had all the stuff. You know, they were definitely doing anything, but they were just doing anything. You know. Like they were like almost, a, and here's yeah. a question I'm going to ask you because yeah. a lot of people, uh, this is where Jimmy and I will have our differences. If if he went to Spiro and the Spiro said to Jimmy Calandra, you got to take out Paulie G, what would happen? Okay, so they, they, they sent me to kill my friend. So I had a similar situation and I tried to kill him twice. So because um, when whenever anybody wants to be um, made in that, that life, you can never say no, Lee. So when he's talking, these people that don't know no better, there's no such thing as no. You understand what I'm saying? When a higher yeah. up tells you to do it, you have to do it. If you say no, not only are you going to get chased, you might get killed yourself. So um, what he's saying is bullshit. If they told him to kill Paulie G, he's killing Paulie G. He'll be the one to lure, this is how they do it. They'll lure him in and he'll shoot him in the back of the head when he's not looking and he'll get drained out over it. That's all it is. That's all it is. And he would do it 100%. I would do well, that, it. When I was well, in that it. lifestyle, I would do it. You know? That's every guy's dream, basically, to get made. Listen, my cousin killed his own brother-in-law. You know what I'm saying? Hey, these guys, you, when you got an order coming down, it comes down, you got to do it. I have a friend of mine doing 23 years of killing his best friend in the life. That's just what happened. You know? And there's a chance that somebody's going to come kill you. That's your friend. Of course. Listen, they come with a yeah. smile. We're taught that. Element of surprise. It's what we're taught. That's what we're taught. Do you have any fear that you're going to be out in the street and one of these guys is going to walk up behind you that want revenge and that's it? 30 years, ago, I would 30 years ago, I would never walk the street. 
I would never but do walk you, it. Do you, do you think that, I mean, from what I understand, there's a lot of guys getting out now that have been locked up and probably got revenge on their mind. Do you, does that I mean, worry you? You got to understand, it's so washed up right now, Lee. Like, well, Hootie, so Hootie, Hootie said something to me, and, and, I, and I played a one-minute video that I taped. Hootie says that when he goes out, he always worries that that could be the day that they decide to get even with Listen, you. listen, I'm not saying people are incapable, but, you know, it's not really going down no more. You know, the murder, I'm, I, from what I heard, a rumor, that they ain't allowed to order murders no more. I heard that they're gone. Mob bosses can't even, they're saying no more murders. No more murders. That's what they're saying. Is that that's because of is that because of the RICO Act and stuff? Because listen, if you don't have the violence, you don't really get a lot of time. You know, that's what I explained on a lot of my shows. When you bring the violence, that's when you get killed. Because when you have loan shocking and gambling and you know certain things, you get ten years, eight years. When you start shooting people, stabbing, beating them with bats, you get twenty, thirty. Now you don't know where someone stands. You know, guys can do ten years, fifteen years. Now you're talking forty, fifty years. That's your life. You don't know where someone's gonna do, Lee. You know what I mean? You don't. You could be the biggest, better, tough guy. Look at Sammy Gavano. Sammy was the, the guy. He's a legend. And he was a mob legend. Look at him. You know, he had 20 murders. You know what I mean? And, you know, you never know what someone's going to do. You know what I mean? You could be the biggest, baddest, toughest guy. But when it comes down to doing that life sentence, you don't know. You know, you just don't know. And what's your opinion on John Gotti Sr.? He was definitely a gangster's gangster, uh, 100%. But he was very flamboyant. Um, remember, you understand something? My uncle... Now, now, here's the thing. I'll give Angel Gotti this. Angel might hate me, and I might hate her, but she'll tell the truth about my Uncle Andy. My Uncle Andy was a mafia legend. And let me explain something to you. He was a real, real, real serious, notorious gangster. And um, he wouldn't like what John Gotti did with the whole media stuff. And John Gotti's actually on wiretap saying he would have made my uncle his underboss if he wasn't in jail. Um, but... Uh, he wouldn't prove what he's what he did with the whole cameras and you know all that stuff. But he was definitely a gangster. But what he did as far as the cameras and you know the media and the Times Magazine and all that, the other families did not like that. You know he was not. They didn't like what he did. Put it that way. But he was a gangster. But you know a celebrity gangster. You know. Do you think? Do you think that John Gotti's biggest one of his biggest mistakes was not taking Rogeri out for what he did? Taking who? Reg quack quack? Reg yeah. Well, what, because what, 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 remember Quack Quack got caught in the tapes and everything, and a lot of people would say that. Yeah, that he's, supposed, why he's, he's supposed to die, right? But um, that was his childhood best friend, and I guess John didn't want to kill him. You know, I can't say we weren't there. You know, I know Quack Quack's right. son pretty good. I had I know Quack Quack's son. Um, I was buddies with him. He was a tough guy too. He's still out there, and um, I don't know. I don't know as far as why he didn't kill him. I could probably say because they were childhood best friends you know that's well that says a, that, i think that says a lot about john Gotti if he's that loyal to a friend right you don't know I he mean, was definitely listen you can't take from what he was but did he ruin the mafia in a way he did he did he was definitely the downfall of organized crime you say and not in the rat way but just in uh he brought too much heat to the to the to life so why do you think that sammy govano i'll give you an example i did a i did a show a couple about a week ago because Sammy Gravano was bashing the shit out of John Gotti and saying stuff that I found in other interviews he didn't say. And one of those things was that that John Gotti wanted him to take the fall. That's true. But, um, That's true. But when, he, but when he did his original interview with Diane Sawyer, he didn't say that was the reason. I mean, 20 years later, he said it was the reason. I'm just saying I heard that from other old people that that was true. I wasn't there. I'm just saying I didn't hear it from Sammy. I am cool with Sammy's son. You know, I do speak to Gerard here and there. Um, I can tell you that I don't, I do believe that story. I'm going to be honest with you. And, you know, that's just my opinion. It's not because I like Sammy or I'm friends with them. I'm just saying from what I heard from other people, that's, that's a valid, that is valid. Well, yeah, I ask so. you these questions. I ask you these questions because you know gangsters. You've been out in the streets. I don't. So me asking right. these questions is like a learning experience. For me. Right. My, gonna, I, I was born around this. My cousin was killed in a hit. My uncle was a boss. Uh, all my friends and family, that's all I knew. You know what I mean? So when people talk about me being this and being that, that's all I knew from young. So when, uh, when I answer something, you know, I pretty have I have good knowledge. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying I know everything, but from what I was told by other people, that that was a true story, that he did ask Sammy to take the fall. Did your mo did, I, I, I'm going to bring up your mother, and if you don't think I should, just tell me. No, I don't Do you, Well, uh, did your mother... You know, it's from what I understand, you have a pretty close relationship with her. 
Right. Was it bo was it bother her when you were out in the streets doing all this stuff? Yeah, I wasn't allowed in that house. Yeah. So you hurt your relationship with your mother during this time? Yeah, they didn't want me around when I was that because I was uh, being watched and, you know, everything. And, um, you know, they did, I just didn't come. I didn't want to go around them when I was doing it. I was, I was carrying guns every day. You know, I was I was really violent and out of my mind, to be honest with you. So, you know, I was just on that mafia shit 24-7 and just looking to hurt people. And I was just I was just really badly, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't even want to be around them that much, you know? So you got to remember that, that you know, you you just did something bad by threatening somebody. So yeah. do you get do you get worried that you can flip that switch at any time? Yeah, I can, and that's a and that's a scary part because um you know I shouldn't have done that. It was always something so stupid, and um you know I had a lot of love for my ex girlfriend. I, I shouldn't even have done that. It was just so dumb, and uh, I shouldn't have even said that to him because the dude's a harmless dude. I wouldn't really hurt him. It was just me talking out of anger, and it, it cost me it cost me a lot to be honest with you. It sent me back a lot. It really did. You know? So that yeah, you wind up hurting yourself more than anybody when that happened. Oh, when oh that it, went down. It, it killed me. It, it killed it killed everything I had going. You know, I was making good money on that show. Um, I had a lot of things going on. They were trying to get me on real TV shows. It killed everything because my I have a very good lawyer friend. Uh, he's a high powered lawyer, and he was trying to get me on a TV show. And um, they were thinking about it, and then it came out that I threatened to kill a woman and her family, which that's not what happened. But that's what they said, and they kind of like said, "No, we can't deal with him." You know what I mean? So it hurt me in the Hollywood world, you know what I mean? Which well, I, had a really good, I had a really good chance, and I'm not just blowing smoke up people's asses. I, I still do, but- Yeah, you're, like, you're still a young guy. I mean, right. uh, there's people that done worse than you in Hollywood. Right, you know. right but they did, it's just that they didn't like the threat towards the woman and the and the Oh, definitely family. not, I can, yeah. I can understand so that. that. And it wasn't towards them, I threatened, I, I did say stupid shit, but you know, the messed up situation about that is that they knew we made up that night and they just blew it out of proportion, but whatever it is, what it is, you know, it is what it is. I did it to myself. I should have never said it, you know? So, so let me ask you, you go, you go to a big, the big controversy with you is that when you get mad, you can get pretty nasty right. talking to people when you want to on, on right. these channels, you can just right. get nasty. And well, that, uh, yeah. right. sometimes don't you feel like you can, do just as much damage not being nasty, just saying the facts. This is what I don't like about certain people. They think they're going to say anything they want to me, call me anything they want, and I'm not going to say nothing back. If they know me by now, if you say something to me, I'm going to attack you 20 times harder. Jimmy Calandra, I had no problem with him. I talked to him all the time. We were cool. When I was, like I said the last time, he was getting me a job, he said. He got commissary money. All of a sudden, I come out, he's talking bad about me. So I let it slide. That was one time. Then two times. And I heard again. I says, all right, now I'm going to slaughter him. You know, I got mad. You know, you're, you're, you're basically being a phony. I don't like that. You know, I was trying to make everybody be cool. All the cooperators, I'm friends with a lot of them. Me, Anthony, Arellato, all of us, we're very close. You know what I mean? So we, this guy's trying to, like, portray, like, he's better than us. He's not at all. He's actually nothing. He's a hub captain. So uh, a guy that is portraying himself to be something bigger and living off his friend's stories. All my stories I talk about is me. I shot. I robbed. I stabbed. I did it. Not other people. You know what I mean? That's why people watch me. That's why people believe what I say. They know what I was doing. What was he doing, this guy? What was his whole credibility? What, 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 what's his background? He ran with some guys that killed a woman? That, that what, what, what is his story? I don't know. Like He coming at me? I, we were cool. And now you're sitting here telling me you never heard of me? Of course you didn't. You off the street, like I said, since 1995. How would you hear of me? Do you think that he kind of played it pretty good the way he uh, he was playing? From what I understand, he was playing both sides because he With wanted, me he was. yeah, because right. he he wanted to uh, like Hootie said that he he contacted him before Hootie did his interview and said, "Please mention me on the show." And yeah. then if you and you watched the show, Hootie did mention him, right? Uh, and then Vla I get mad because. The only thing I'm mad about is because Sammy Gravano should not be backing this guy up. You know, he's not a caliber for his, I'm not even a caliber for Sammy to back up. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I'm around, but, like, Sammy is backing this guy up and making him bigger than what he is, and he really was nothing. He really was nothing. If anyone knows the mafia like I do and other people, he ended his career at 23 years old. That will tell you that you didn't have a career. You didn't have one. You were just running around as a kid doing some things. You did some fucked up crimes, and you testified against a big-time gangster that you have no work with. What did he actually do for, for this guy except for testifying him killing his friend? What? 
Why? Except for, oh, wait, he was a driver in the murder, right? When Paulie G killed the guy with Sparrow? No, he was at the door. No, when the guy killed, the, when Paulie G shot the guy in the street, he was the driver. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, he was the driver. What was he, four yeah. blocks down? What was he, four yeah. blocks down with binoculars? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Because I know when I went after people, I shot them. I did it. I wasn't five blocks down sitting on the corner with a telescope. So, you know, it's a little different. You know, our crimes are different. You know? So, yeah, if he wants yeah. to keep, it, listen, if he wants to run his mouth about me, I had no problems with him. I liked him. I always talked with him. We were cool. All of a sudden, he, you know, started talking about me. I don't know what he thought. He thought I was going to take it. No, that's not going to happen. That's not do you think happen. it's do you think it's hypocritical when people uh, like certain people because it helps them, but at the same time they dislike other people? I don't know if that makes any sense. I know what you're saying. You're basically yeah. saying he's a rat, but he's my rat, and he's good because he's my rat. It doesn't make I know the whole thing yeah. is just sick. It's sick. Angel Gotti backs Jimmy Calandra. Jimmy Calandra's best friends with Sammy. <laughs> Yeah, it's very weird. <laughs> it's very weird. Know. I don't know what's going on anymore. I can say this, and I'll be honest with you. Sammy Gavano, anything he says, I believe. That's my that's just my opinion. That's my opinion. Now you might not agree with it. My opinion is he was the real deal. He was in this life. I think he's a real de deal, but when he changes stories around to benefit him, like uh the Alan Kaiser one, I have issues with that. You know, because no, I, I understand he, that. You know, he's downgrading that kid, you know, the kid saying the kid ran at him and that didn't happen. And it's fact, you know, those things bother me. I think a guy like Sammy has so many great stories. When he sits down, he controls a room. Of course. He has that gift. And not of many course. people have that gift. And, you now know. Let me, now, what, let me ask you a question and I want you to answer me honestly. Okay. And I'm going to go into the story on because this. I have a friend named Anthony Arellata. He's out of Massachusetts, right? He, he ran Massachusetts. He was a captain in Massachusetts. He got ordered to kill his boss from New York over a 302. He killed his boss over a 302. New York ordered him to die. What's the difference between him and John Jr. doing a 302? Explain that. Explain it. I'm not a mafia expert. I can't tell you. I, you know, What's you, the guys, though? you guys understand 302s better than me. All I know is this. If you do a 302, well, here's what, what are you? John here's what John Jr. says. Yeah. He, he did a 302, but no one ever went on trial. No one ever got in trouble that for it. That don't matter. That don't matter. That don't matter. In the mall, bro, that don't matter. If you even agree to shit, you'll get killed over that, at that status that he is. He was a boss of a family. Do you understand what I'm telling you? He was a boss. You do not agree to nothing with the FBI. Okay? So what he's telling you is just a, excuses. I tell it what it is. You do a 302, that's a dead sentence, bottom line. Well, well, you know, let's be fair to John Jr. too, is the fact that he's come out of jail. He's got his shit together. You don't see him out here acting crazy or doing stupid shit. But it you don't know? matter. He's still a cooperator. Like a right. He's still a cooperator. He won't just, he won't say that. He's coming out with a show called Witchack Mafia. He's supposed to be on it. Like, so, on. so when, what do you think of that, that coming out with Sec Mafia? I think it's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. You, you, know don't think make fun, you know how many people make fun of him about that? How is a rat coming out with Zach Mafia? He's known as a rat. I sat with high-ranking people. I used to sit with captains every day. He was not allowed to talk to people. They labeled him a rat. You understand that? I have nothing to lie about. You understand, you talking, you understand you talking to me like this, I'm going to get blasted. You know that, right? <laughs> Let, them say, well, yeah, okay. Let them. Well, <laughs> Let them. Because I have no, I, I'll be honest with you. When I see John Gotti Jr., I see a guy that's sophisticated, intelligent, and, uh, and, and has his shit together. And a rat. He cooperated. And is yeah. that what, do you think that's what the average guy on the street thinks? Not the average guy. Everyone thinks but him and his family. That's the only thing what, what they don't understand. See, maybe someone from Texas and Kentucky might not think it, but anyone from the five boroughs in the mafia still active, call him a rat. That's what people don't understand. He's coming out with a show called Witch Act Mafia. He's supposed to be on the fucking show. That's that's why everybody laughs about it. That's why Angel Gotti, she makes me so mad when she's going, Witch Act Mafia. I'm like, what are you talking about? Your brother's a rat. Like, you're a rat. You call my parole every, once a week. Like, come on, stop. Well, I've seen, I seen something that kind of bothered me uh, yesterday. Yeah. Um, they were doing a show. I don't know if you've seen this. I did. And, I watched it. And, I know what you're talking and, about. And, and what am I talking about? 
I already know what you're talking about because everyone's talking about it. What is it? I got a, I got a hundred messages over it. She basically told Fat Balls Hussein that she didn't want to hear Chris Pinchella's story no more and change it, and he did. I'm getting a hundred messages over. I was gonna text him and say, "Bro, don't let this lady control your channel, bro," because he got a good channel. I like him. I think he's oh, he good. does. Oh, he I is. like his channel. I like his channel. I swear, if he if he would listen to me, because I used to talk to him and I was trying to tell him, "You gotta stop listening to these people. They're gonna make you." Do what they want, and when you don't, they're going to throw you to the curb. They're just trying to control you. That's all they want. If they can't well, control you, they have to use you. That used to be the rep on me. Is like I was Gotti's boy, and now that's mm -hmm. the rep on him. He's a Gotti's, uh, you know, unfortunately. How, how is he letting a woman tell him? Chris Pacello is a multimillionaire, first of all. His story is very interesting. He banged J-Lo. He banged the hottest women in Hollywood. He's a millionaire and lives in Miami. His story is very interesting. He was uh, testified against Ali Persico, one of the biggest gangsters you know, around. He has a very interesting story. So um, Bullhead Sassin was on a good roll with that story. So she jumped in because all she wants to do is talk about her father, her brother, and her, you know? And besides, you know, with her, it's very hard for her to get out of bed. They need a forklift to get her out of bed. So she can't really see the TV that much, you know what I'm saying? So she got, you know... They got to get her out. With yeah, them. but dude, that's not no fat jokes, okay? It's not like it's not like I'm Tiny Tim over here. Uh, <laughs> oh, you need, you don't need a forklift though. <laughs> uh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> that could change. You never know. If if my you fat know, ass breaks breaks a hip, they're gonna get a forklift. And you <laughs> know it's so funny because I would never ever say anything about her. I never did. The only reason why I do what I do, and I don't care what anyone, I don't care what anyone has to say about it. When I got violated, she posted on her Instagram. And no, and no one could talk to me. I was in the hole. She put on her Instagram a fake story that I was beaten and raped in jail. And everyone thought that really happened to me. And had people calling MDC on me. She started that. Well, so when Chris, I came home, Chris, I said, Well, Chris Casparosa hits you real fucking hard on the show. I mean, right. where, where right. he just, he was just mocking the hell out of you. Right. And, you know, they don't want me to say nothing back. Chris Casparosa is a nobody. He's nothing. He's just a golfer. He's, he, he clips Scotty's toenails. He's nothing. He's just a guy that's their bitch. They tell him to do whatever he does. He's their clown. You know what I mean? This guy don't have no respect. He's a fucking nothing. You know what I mean? These, these guys see me, they run. Chris would run for his life. He's seen me in the street. Casparosa. I'll call the cops. That's all he'd do. That's all he would do, Lee. That's it. So do you see them coming after me for giving you this interview? Be honest. Yeah, but who cares? I got you back. Don't worry about it. Let them. I'll, I'll let them. Let them. You know, my my whole thing changed after I was doxxed by the people that were supposed to be my friends. Right. That's when I realized that they're not my friends and, you know, nope. you don't do shit like that, you know. And Listen. Listen, I don't mind anybody trying to make a name for themselves. On, I know what it is. They all want to make money on YouTube. I know what they're doing. You know, you got guys coming out of the woodworks. And they're all trying to make money on YouTube. But the only ones I said that a couple are going to succeed, and you and Fat Ball Sicilian can definitely succeed that are not mob guys. So my opinion is to keep doing what you're doing. I told Fat Ball Sicilian the same thing. Don't let this lady ruin your show because you two can keep this going and do well for yourselves, you know? Well, see, right now he doesn't realize that what she did last night, a lot of people are talking about it. I got a hundred messages about it. How about that? I got screenshots. I could show you from a hundred different people saying, "Yo, she Angel Gotti's the boss over there," and making a mockery of it. Yeah. Yeah. And and I got the same thing because people were sending it to me saying, "Man, he she just shut him down and said I don't want to talk about the check." Um, and then she said, "Yawn." It just didn't look good, you know. Nah, it, you know, listen. I, she, I, I actually felt like, bad for him because he's very good like, at what he does. This lady, this lady, 60 years old, you know, my father, my father was good friends with her back in the day. She always talks about my father and everything like that. But her and my father were very good friends. They used to talk on the computer all the time. They were really, really good friends. And they had a fallout. I think they used to like kind of like cyber date, whatever they were doing. I don't know. But uh, they, they used to talk and then they had a fallout and I had to get in the middle of it. This is before I was a cooperator. And remember, I was very close with uh, Angel's son. He was one of my best friends growing up, Frankie Albano. And, um, you know, obviously they're mad at me over their nephew, but. They can't change history. Her son was a drug addict, really bad, like really bad. And she knows that. And when I say it, it gets her mad. You know what I mean? She can't handle it. No, what, gets, you know? what gets her more mad than anything is the husband thing. Because the man well, passed away, he had a heart attack and, you know. Right. And I'll well, agree with her. I mean, I think yeah. there's certain things you leave off the table. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I can get pretty ruthless, but when you want to make up rumors that I was beaten to death in jail and raped, um, no holds bars. I'll go even worse. 
You know, if I get that man, I'll go piss on the grave. You know, if you want to keep on doing things like that to me, I'll just keep getting worse and worse. So every time you attack me, I'm just going to get worse, 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 and worse. That's it. You, know? you got to you got to be careful with that, Jim, because that's what leads you to the violence. When right. you start getting angry and you start fighting like that and stuff, right. next thing you know, you're you're beating somebody up in a grocery store somewhere, and you're being pulled off, and you're looking at twenty years in, in Listen, prison. I run into people all the time. They see me. I, they know what it is. If you're going to get crazy with me, we're fighting. It's that simple. So don't 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 think you're approaching me and nothing's going to happen. So they know they know who to approach and not to approach. You know, I'm in the gym I, all the time. I'm all over the place. People see me. They know what it is. If you're going to get tough with me, expect. You're going to get what you're looking for. I might not now win. You, now, you know, one of the most popular videos I ever made was that, and I know it pissed you off, was that Howard Beach one. Oh, what the? Yeah. When you remember, that's, oh. that's the first time you ever came at me. You know, it's like, you were like, who the fuck is this old fuck? I, I didn't you know? know who you are. You just doing the thing. I, listen, I didn't know who you are. I was like, who are these guys? You know, it just came out of left field. That was a, listen, that video. Like I said, I, I don't want to get into it, but they they, they could have got in trouble for that. But I wasn't, I didn't let them. You know, I was like, you're so stupid, they're young. You know, it was just dumb. Nothing happened. It was a bunch of screaming. You know, all they did was people call my pro, people call my probation and said I had a weapon. That's all that happened. And, and that that's, that was a losing situation. If you started knocking people out or vice versa, they oh, jumped yeah. you. Somebody was going to go to jail for that. Most likely you. Well, here's you know, the thing, because Lee. there was 15 of them. You're supposed to beat me to death. You're supposed to do whatever you want to me. That, you know, honestly, you know, so made them look even worse. A lot of guys I talked to were just like, yo, they should not play that shit. It looks so stupid. The real video, they they show the edited version. The beginning is when they ran up the block, but whatever. No, you there. Let's get to another thing. Yeah. John A. Light. And, yeah. and the reason, uh, but John A. Light, a lot of people just think that he's full of shit. A lot of people. Um, and they just don't believe him. And it's not just a couple people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there is evidence a lot of things that he has said isn't exactly accurate. Why don't you think John just, you know, it's obvious that he did a lot of stuff in the street. He got wow. through a Brazilian, he got, he got through a Brazilian prison and right. not just that, oh, any white. Oh, wait, that John Jr. says that isn't really that bad. The worst prisons in the world. Right. I think they, they make that look like it's nothing. One of the worst prisons in the world. I know. Come on. Anybody, anybody with common sense wouldn't say that. You know, that's right. the reality. Right. Because they especially have, they, if you're white. Especially they if you're white. Bowls. They didn't have toilet bowls. You're shitting in the ground. Come on, bro. These guys won't yeah. last three days in there. Come on. And then on top of that, you're a gringo. Come on. I mean, that's what I, yeah. that's, that's the only thing that gets me mad like, with some of these shows when they keep knocking them and knocking them. I'm like, this guy's been to a lot, man. He did a lot of stuff in his life, man. It's just like, you know, I understand what he did. He cooperated and everything. But they really knocked this guy. This guy was really a serious dude in the street, man. That's what gets me mad. That's when they get me, man. Do you think it bothers them every time he pops up? But like he just recently popped up on another show. It's like people will say that he's done, and all of a sudden he'll pop up on a show somewhere, and it's like, where did that fucking come from? So, I mean, what do you think about when? I mean, it seems like he has nine lives. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Still, I can't hear you. Let's see. Yeah, hey, you back. Oh. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. I uh, thought John, maybe I thought okay. maybe I thought maybe Angel cut that off somehow. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> okay. So. Um, uh, Johnny Eli, like I said, um, I don't say this because he's my friend, but I only say this because I know what he was doing. And um, sometimes his stories do sound crazy, but he was definitely, definitely one. And I'm not just saying this because he's my friend. He was one of the most dangerous guys in the area. And, you know, there's so much evidence to prove that. There's a lot of evidence to prove both. I know what you're going to say, that he's a bullshitter and that he was one of the most serious guys around. You know, I've heard my own ears from FBI agents that this guy really shot 40 guys. That's a lot of people. You know, at the end of the day, no matter where he shot them, that's a lot of shootings, man. You know, guy, that's like some army shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's a lot. You know, so... That actually, you know, actually that, that that's a bad shot. Well, I mean, you're shooting you know, 40 people, he, he, you know. Wouldn't you, know, you say that? You're supposed to kill him. 
Right. Well, he wasn't always supposed to kill him, you know. You know, what I mean, I think I think he killed like five or six people. I think I think it's somewhere around that. I know he killed the butcher the guy. I know he has a few real vicious crimes. And um, with me, with him, is that I believe everything he does say because I I'm from the neighborhood and I know some of the most violent guys to this day that I still talk to, and they said, bro, he's not lying about nothing. You okay, know, so who who do, you, who do you think in the street was more respected, A Light or Junior? Well, of course, Junior, because he's got his son. But as far as street cred, John, uh, Johnny A. Lott, you know what I mean? As far as the mafia world, yeah, John Junior is going to be. But as far as really knowing who the street guy was, it was A. Lott, of course. Anyone will tell you that. What's your, what's your opinion of this Panisi guy? He definitely knows his stuff. Um, I know the people that he's talking about. I didn't know him personally, um, but he definitely knows what he's talking about. Um, I think uh, personally, I have. I never had no interaction with him, so I don't I don't have an opinion on him. I just know the stuff that he says is valid, you know, the stuff that he's talking about. He's he's spot on, he don't lie, he's uh very accurate. What do you think of mob rats? <laughs> he's he's funny, but like his voice is getting played out now. Like it was funny at first, now his voice is like getting burnt out. You know what I mean? Like it's, it was funny, but like at first now honestly people are touching me like, yo, he's getting corny, he's getting played out now. He's going to fade away, to be honest with you. It's getting played out. He keeps talking about the same thing. You got to switch it up, man. He just brings up A-Light every episode, bro. It's just be, it should just be called A-Light Exposed. It's just like, it's all it's about. That's all he talks about. Well, I, I told him the other day that after this Doxon thing happened with me, Doxon cannot be talked about anymore. Yeah. You know, that's that. They, once they did it to me, you know, it's... I have no interest in it no more because once it happens to you and it's done by the people always bitching about it, you know, how can you take it serious? Listen, I know, but it's so obvious who he works for. I mean, it's so obviously. It doesn't take a rocket science scientist to figure out who they are and who they work for. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Like, come on. You know? Now, he's been around. Angel Gotti, Chris Casparosa, the whole squad. Yeah, but they you know. know who it is, man. But you say it's Angel Gotti, Casparosa, then it's all Casparosa, and the whole crew. But Coast Casparosa doesn't get along with Canarsi. So it's all bullshit. how They're do you all... see all all this working? Listen, it, listen, we know who's behind that 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 whole mob rats thing. We're not stupid. We know who it is. And it tells it's it, like I said, some of his videos get big views, now they're going down. If you watch his videos, they don't even get big views no more. It's the same thing he keeps talking about. But, but he's a very, down. but but he's a very smart man. Everybody's I mean, in this for the money. Everybody's in this for the money, Lee. I don't care what they tell me. And you're not making no money with those views. So he's wasting his time. You understand? You could go to the next level. Boss is saying go to the next level. You just want to make you make really good money on these podcasts, but you got to get thousands and thousands of views. Getting a thousand views a show, two thousand views a show, you don't make you make sense. So you know. It's pointless. He's just doing it because he has nothing to do, basically. Or he's good at maybe he believes in what he does. I don't think so. I don't think so. You can't. Uh, is he a street guy? He hates rats that much? That doesn't make sense. He wasn't even in the street. What's he hate us for so much for? Don't make sense. It don't make sense. What's he hates us for? He wasn't in the street. You didn't get told on. What do you hate us so much for? It doesn't make any sense. It's either someone put him there, pay, or he's just a loser, has no life, you know? Now, what kind of plan do you have when you come back and you're allowed on the Internet and you can do this? Uh, and of course, we're doing this and you're going to let me release this as long as as soon as you know that you're allowed to. You know, right. it's being done the correct way. Right. You know, if, if someone kills right. you, at least uh, at least at least I have this. I, you know, a matter of fact, it would video, be, yeah. <laughs> that, that'd be pretty good, dude. No, I mean, don't get killed. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, <laughs> what are you planning on doing um, once you come back online? I have a you. I have a podcast uh, with um with all somebody said it was a uh, porno uh, Instagram model. It said a porno star. I mean, I mean, I mean, she's not a porn star. She's like an OnlyFans girl. She's like an Instagram model, but she's cool. So she was a nurse for like thirteen years, but she has like a big following. And we're gonna do a whole mixture of things. It's gonna be more about like just relationships, uh, life, and, and just a lot of, it's going to look more professional. It's going to look, like, you, it's gonna look did, like Sammy Gravano show. How did you meet her? I mean, how did you come up with this thing? I was supposed to kill her boyfriend at one time back in the day. 
And wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna wow. I'm not gonna get into the story, but I was supposed to kill him and uh uh over something he did uh, back in the day in like twenty thirteen and that's how I met her, actually. Yeah. Did she did she stop you or something? No, but it, it's a long story, but uh we'll get into it on my podcast I'm gonna do it with her. So it was oh. pretty funny. I was oh, looking for it. a boyfriend with a shotgun. <laughs> And what did she say? Come here. No. <laughs> so you, you, how how many days a week? How many day? How many days a week are you going to work with her? I mean, how many? How how often are you planning um, on doing? We're going to do like. We're going to do a lot. It's going to be a. Big, we're trying to make it into a really big show. So what I've discovered is the only way you can make money when you have only a couple thousand people is by like putting out an, a video every night, and. Uh, that's why like yes. someone like me or Chris, we continuously put out videos. You have to. Uh, yeah. Uh, right, you have to. See, with me and Johnny, we were, when we had it, we were, do, we were doing one video a week because we were getting a large amount. So right. we were putting them out, getting 150000 One of our videos is like 600000 right now. So it was going really, really hard. You know what I mean? And plus, we were getting uh, endorsements. So when you, they see your show blowing up, they give you ads and endorsements. People... I'll sponsor me, you know, we'll pay you to put, put our, uh, our company in your show. And that's how you make money also on it. You know, I'm going to ask you a question that no one's probably ever asked you. Yeah. How did you guys have Felix all of a sudden join you? I mean, what, what's the story behind that? Um, me and Johnny felt like he, he very smart kid. He's young, but he's very intelligent. He's a good talker. And we felt like me and Johnny talk like not professional too much. So we wanted somebody to sit with us that talk professional that could question us and interview us and, and, and make the show more, look more professional, which he did. He brought that to us. He did. It was a perfect map, a per perfect mix. So where do you think you – say you didn't get in trouble. Where do you think you'd be right now with that show? Number two. You really number think you would have been there? 100%. Because you, you guys are popping out 100,000 people of videos sometimes. More. No? One, oh, one video will? has like 600,000. Yeah, it was going crazy. It was going, the numbers were going crazy. Yeah. And so now John does it, but it seems like uh, a lot of people would say it's not the same that you were actually, you you brought more people to it than John. And I hear that a lot. Well, here's the thing. Well, here's the thing. I'll tell you why they said that. Because I was new. Remember, Johnny's been doing this 10 years. You got to give him credit. Got to stay around in this in this thing for 10 years and not get burnt out is pretty good. No? Oh, I mean, yeah. Come on. To hold those views like that for that many years, that's good. So I was new. I was fresh. You know, they knew I was really in from the most – Howard Beach is one of the most known organized crime neighborhoods. I was with these big guys. I had family related. They knew I was wild. So I brought a lot. I was like a younger version of him. So we were the perfect storm. So everybody just loved the, the younger, older generation. That was the idea, and it worked. And how old were you when you first started doing serious stuff for certain families, like the Gambinos? Uh, I was with was the Bananos, the, 18. Bananos, 18. Okay. Eight, so 18, yes. you started 18 doing serious stuff. Yes. When was the first time you yeah, got Yeah, I went pinched? to jail, 18, yeah. Oh, you did? For how long? 16. Uh, how no, long I didn't do no time. I got locked up for crimes at 16. At 18, I, got, I did two, uh, 19 months, sorry. I did 19 months at 18 years old. Where did you do it? Uh, Rikers Island. So you were in Rikers Island? Yeah. So what was that like being yeah. on Rikers Island, being a being a white guy on Rikers Island? What was that like? Yeah. <laughs> if anyone was there, they could tell you, man. It's the worst. Oh my god, man! It's like it's like so crazy in there. It's it's like a it's like a movie, you know. It's yeah. Like this, I, I spent a year. I almost spent a year in the Queen's House of Detention, and uh, that was pretty bad too, but not as bad as Rikers, you know. Yeah. But I spent Rikers a little time on Rikers. A whole new animal, man. It's just. I, I, I never got yeah, past the I was in the school. best buildings, man. It's oh. So that's something that... So how did you get along with the prisoners? I mean, did you blend in or did you have to fight all the time when you were there? Yeah. I you, mean, you fight, but I, I got along with everybody. The gang members like me, like I always said. You know, I got along with them. Okay, I did. So, okay, so do you think right now um, that you're going to be able to... Uh, um, I, how do I say this? Do you have handlers? No, they kicked me out. 
They did. Yeah, they kicked me out uh, because yeah. of what I did. Yeah, they don't. That, they don't consider. I'm not. I'm not considered one of their cooperators anymore. But can they come to you and say, "Look, we need this information, and you have to give it to them no matter what"? Nope, not no more. The probation told me basically that I do not have to talk to them if I don't want to. And they they kicked me out basically. Yeah. Okay. So do you see? Do you, so that's it. I mean, no more. Did they give you the opportunity to to go somewhere and hide? Yeah, I refused. I refused. Did you yeah. ever? Did you regret refusing? Or are you glad you you did it? No, I wanted to stay over here. Well, I wasn't worried about it. I'm like, I don't care. You know, I didn't care. As soon as you uh, as soon as you ratted and you came out and stuff, did you ever feel like scared? No, I was more upset because I I missed a lot of my friends I grew up with. So I was upset because I knew they weren't going to talk to me, and that bothered me. You know, I had a circle of friends that I was really close with, and I knew that was going to hurt me because I was super tight with my friends, and you know, that was hard to deal with. But how many of those friends wind up getting in the same situation and doing what you did? Oh, a lot of them. But I mean, you know, it's just like you know, for the most part, I had regular friends that weren't mob guys, but they still grew up around the neighborhood, and you know, I lost them, and they were they were like my closest friends, you know. Well, you know, I did an hour interview with you and I like it, you know, and I like yeah. to do another, I like to do another one with you right now. And to me, I can say, I, I mean, not right now, but I like to do another one with you, but I think this is a good start. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't want to overdo it. Yeah. I want it to be a solid hour and which we're at. Right. And uh, why don't you tell us before we leave about your, you got a book that you got coming out. Why don't you tell us something? Do you have a, well, you have, I have it. Yeah. Can I see it? Yeah, I have it right here. Um, you see it? Move it over. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. And how's it? And is it? Is it out there for sale right now? It's top 20 in the organized crime book world right now. It's selling like crazy. Oh, is it? Yeah. And where can you go? Amazon? Yes. Yeah. Amazon, uh, all what? over the internet right now. Um, I, didn't think it, I didn't think it was going to sell that much, but it did. And what do you? Th what is the book generally about? I mean, if you had to say. So what? What happened? What happened with this book was it was originally three hundred and sixty pages, and it was edited a lot because I had a top editor on editor on it, and she said, "Gene, the book makes you look really crazy." She goes, "I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna leave the stories in, but I'm gonna take out a lot of stuff that you did for your, you know, like just you run around in chaos." She goes, "I'm gonna make it what you were doing with." These guys, your main crew guys, you know, make it a mob book. And she was right. You know, a lot of the crazy things, you know, us beating guys in the head with pipes and almost killing the dudes and saying they didn't want too much of that. They wanted the stuff more I did for the family, not just me and my other buddies going around just fucking causing havoc. So uh, they basically made it more about Vinny Sauer, Ronnie G, our crew, loan shocking operations, the guys we shot for them, her for them, beat people up, you know, for the mob. So it was basically about a clean fraction, banana, uh, banana crew and how we ran Howard Beach and how my boss is one of the richest guys in the area and we work for a legendary mobster and, you know, just my upbringing of being involved in that. Pretty good. Yeah. So far, and, I'm getting and, a lot of good reviews. And what do you think about people that say, oh, all these rats got books and they got shows on YouTube? And what do you think when people say that? They wish they could be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, true. You, got, you, you got to be it. One thing I'm learning is you got to be interested for someone Listen, to watch you. Lee, look at there's only a certain few of us. Sammy, the one there's certain ones that are really big. If you really look at it. there's a lot of them, but there's only a few of us that are really big. Look at the Instagrams, look at the followings, look at the views. And I'm one of them. And I'm one of them, Lee. And people don't like that. I'm one of the top five in this in this whole thing. I might be top three if you really break it down. I got more views and Instagram followers than a lot of people, and people love me, man, on this stuff. So I'm young. I, I say anything I want. You know, they know I'm telling the truth and you know, I really made something out of this, you know, and people don't like it, but I'm going to continue to do it. Now, you and I, we've had our ups and downs. Why did you choose yes. to do this with me? I like you. <laughs> I generally okay. like you. Though. I tell everyone that. I think you're all right. I think uh, I, I, I know you know what you're doing. You talk well. I, I would even do it with Fat Balls the same, but, you know, I know that the Gotties would that would kick him out the whip, as we want to say, if he did that, you know. Um, but, uh, 
It was, it was it's, him. it's too bad and, he's, uh, because he's an excellent interviewer. You know, so that would, you know, he interviewed. Right. But see, it doesn't make sense to me. He's, he'll interview Jimmy Calandra, who's a rat. But not you. Right. See, this is this is where I'm confused right. about things, you know. And me, they right. give me hell because I already told them I'll interview anybody. That's that, you know. And, right. and, and right. they don't like it. I interviewed. Uh, well, I interviewed it, John A. Light and had twenty thousand views on that, you know. And the funniest thing, my highest video ever has a picture of Sammy Gavano on it. It says Sammy Gavano attacks John A. Light. To this day, it's my highest yeah. video. So it's certain people. Well, I can tell you this. Right. We we all the talent. And I know it sounds crazy, but, you know, the cooperators is the ones that people want to see. They don't want to hear about guys, stacks, talking about him shooting dope in a hallway. You know what I'm saying? We, they want to hear uh, us talk about what we did in our lives. And, you know, like I said, we have a, I'm going to say this now. We have a huge Netflix documentary coming out. It's huge. And um, there's going to be eight of us in it. And it's coming out. We're going to start filming very shortly. It's going to be huge. And um, huge budget, huge director, and it's going to be big. Make Witchsack Mafia look like nothing. And um, it's coming out very shortly. We start filming very shortly. Now, I'm probably the only one in this in this genre that's not Italian, and I just come in here and I'm doing I'm doing pretty good, despite all the attacks. You are. And, uh, and, and why do you think that is? Because the balls are silly. Because you don't do what they say. And uh, you don't do what they say. You know, I just feel this way. I feel like if you don't play that game, if you don't, I think you got to interview everybody, no matter who they are. I mean, I don't think the show is legit if you don't. That's how you make it in this business. No, it doesn't. That's how you make it, buddy. That's how you make it. We we started this interviewing the the ex bad guys. We got in trouble for it. You know. We got in trouble for it. I wasn't supposed to sit with ex-cons and felons. We started bringing on all these guys and doing interviews with cooperators and bringing all these stuff on. And we we were causing havoc in the East and the Southern District. Judges were going nuts, you know. So we started all this stuff, me and Johnny. And now everybody's following suit, and it works. You know what I mean? It's get, it's going to get burnt out, though. Certain guys will stay yeah. along, and certain guys will not, you know? Okay, I want to, real quick, um, Larry Mazza. Yeah. I had somebody, I was doing a show the other day, and Larry Mazza came, uh, someone came on that, an old timer. He was, you know, he was about maybe 70. He came on and he goes, he was in the neighborhood with Mazza and he goes, Lee, Mazza was a made man. I don't understand why they keep saying he wasn't. Right. So what do you say when when old timers come on and say, look, I remember that neighborhood. Everybody knew Larry Mazza was made. What kills me is that people take Jimmy Calandra's word over Larry Mazza. Jimmy Calandra was in the ma- wasn't even in the mafia. He wasn't even in the mafia. He has nothing to do with it. He ran around with a little crew. You're gonna take a word over a guy that ran with Gregory Scarpa, one of the most dangerous men in probably mafia history. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take this crumb bum's word. I can't. I wish I was allowed back on YouTube because I would chase him all. Okay, he is such a nobody, nothing bum. Living off other people's stories. Larry Mazza put work in. Larry Mazza killed guys. Larry Mazza got work. He was with the Grim Reaper, bro. He's with the fucking Grim Reaper. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. How are you going to sit here and take his word? Over well, they his? said he was with the Grim Bad. Reaper's wife. They said he was with the Grim Reaper's wife, too. <laughs> I, heard, <laughs> listen, I heard all those stories. <laughs> I, I, I heard all those stories. I, I hope she was happen. at least. I was she hot? Those. Was she hot? I, I don't know. That's I <laughs> Can you imagine? Like now, she's probably like eighty, and she's like, <laughs> they're, "They're taking this. They're taking this guy's credit. They're taking his side." The Jimmy Calandra. Who is this guy? He really, he's, a, he's a Jerry's kid. Look at him. How do you take him seriously? He can't even talk, Lee. He can't talk. Look, well, you know, well, the, 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 you know what they're going to do? They're going to go. Lee had an interview with Barillo, and all he did was attack Calandra. And you know, I'm not making I you say any anybody. of this. Name a guy. Name a guy. I don't care. Name a guy. I'll attack him. Or I won't. Who I like and don't like. I don't care who it is. I'll tell you the truth about him, man. Anyone you want to name, we'll go through this again. You got, listen. Next time I come on, you go through guys, and I'll name well, them. Well, I you respect you because them. you didn't attack me, and you didn't attack Bolt Sicilian. So you know, I respect that. You know, so you must. I got. Res- I like you guys. Yeah. I like you well, guys. I think he's going to make it in this business. I really don't. And Hootie, another thing with Hootie, everybody got to stop shitting on him, man. He, he's a good man. He's good. People don't give him his credit. He's good. He's got good stories. 
He really yeah, does, but who, man. Who do you just have to do his shit and not let it bother him? Because he does get the views and he does, you know, what's he got? Like 3,000, four, when he has he's like 3,000 followers already, you know? So he, it's obvious people like him. Yeah. He, you know, the best thing for Hootie to do is not right. worry about what other people think. Just do his show, end of story. Right. That's what I would do it if I was Hootie. Because, dude, that's all they do is attack me. What am I going to fucking worry about these people? And, and after this interview is oh, over. They, that's all they do with me, too. They're gonna they're gonna accuse me of you and me and you being in the same house and Howard Beach doing the interview. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what they're gonna say. Hey, they, they, hey, listen, listen. They posting girls. They posting girls that I that I sleep with that are smoking hot. They're like, oh, she ain't hot. Me, Marvin's like, bro, they're gorgeous. This is what they do. You know what I'm saying? Anything I do, they knock it. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. You know, they hate me for everything I do. You know, that's just yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's that why. you're. Yeah, from what I understand, you have no trouble with the women. And I've heard this. So, you know, uh, and, you know, to be fair with John A. Light, I, guess, I, heard, I, get a lot. I, I heard that John A. Light was them. pretty good with the women. So, you know, they could say what they want, but that's what you hear. Yeah, tons of women. Yeah. Okay, my man, I'm going to. We get I'm women. Turn, I get tons of them. They get jealous of that. I'm going to turn this off right now, and then we'll talk. All right. Okay. All right. uh, but anyway, this is Gene Barillo. Gene, what's the name of your book? One more time. Uh, uh, Born in the Life. Uh, check it out right here. It's all over the place, everywhere. It sounds like crazy. Um, and, so, and, right now someone, and right now, someone and right now, someone's saying, "Why is he putting that book up?" Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's end this broadcast. Give me a second. Yeah. <laughs>